So autism in babies. Can a hearing test help identify autism in people as young as babies? Find out all of that right now. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan. I have autism, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia and I make weekly videos on this type of content. So if you're new around here and you'd like to learn more about that subject, remember to hit the subscribe button by clicking that notification bell down below. And if you're watching on Facebook, be sure to give this page a follow. And if you're on Instagram watching, make sure to follow this account for more autism content. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Aspie world, the place where we think differently daily. What is going on, my different thinker fam? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Now, I wanted to do this video because I came across this news article and this story and I felt like it was quite a bizarre story. So um, I wanted to kind of cover it in a video. But before we get started, guys, what is going on? Where are you watching from? Drop me a comment down below. Let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to know where my viewers are. Oh, and also I have a free autism life hack PDF book. If you want to download that, you can do it at autismhacks.net right now for free. So autism is a communication disorder, as we all know. And if you're, you know, a recurring subscriber on my channel, you know I talk a lot about autism and some of the characteristics and behaviours of people on the autism spectrum. Now, one of the things is that auditory sensory processes with autism are somewhat challenging at some times. So, autistic people have comorbid conditions um, like sensory processing disorder or SPD. Now, SPD can impact the lives of people with an autism spectrum condition uh, in many ways, like they could be sensitive to food or light or sound or smells or anything really that your sense touches, you know, like maybe it would be the collar on your uh, the neck of your shirt or it could be like the seam of your socks or even the heat of a room um, and maybe you're more susceptible to heat than other people. But having this auditory um, uh, senses heightened or sometimes under um, uh, sensitive to those things. Um, can give a good indication for certain things because non-autistic people don't usually or don't typically have these um, these heightened senses in terms of like auditory and sensory processing disorder. So researchers at the University of Miami with along with Harvard Medical School, they explored um, responses to uh, standard hearing tests administered by millions of newborn kids around the world. Uh, they suggested that they are super close to detecting an early indicator of autism in children, um, even just at birth. So basically they took a bunch of people who are um, neurotypical, which means they are not autistic, uh, at birth and they did the uh, hearing test stuff. And then they did the standard hearing test then for people on the autism spectrum and compared the results. Now they compared the results and everybody who was non-autistic responded pretty much the same way, but everybody who was autistic responded in a completely different way. And that way was actually characterized and they noted that down, which basically means that the research team analyzed over 140,000 um, auditory recordings from babies in Florida. And then they matched that data with the records from the Florida Department of Education indicating, you know, ch children with developmental disabilities like autism. So, I mean, where does that leave us really? Uh, the only thing that it does is that it opens up the possibility that if you are pregnant, uh, they, they do a bunch of different tests to see how your baby is progressing and seeing, you know, how everything's going and they do all these tests. And when your baby's born, I remember when my son was born, they come over and they do these tests. They make sure that, you know, they've got enough vitamins in their body and all this kind of stuff. So I guess an added test would be a hearing test and that test, um, well, an added phase to the hearing test that would actually search for uh, how they respond to certain things. And those, you know, being one of those ones they look for is autism. Now, a lot of people be th thinking to themselves and saying, well, why would you want to know if your baby is autistic or not? You know, you'd surely find out as they grow and develop. And that is true. And a lot of people, you know, don't kind of develop until, you know, maybe the three or four years old, it tends to become more of um, something that impacts their life. Now, because of this, um, uh, you then have to start the process from the child's age of when they get diagnosed. So if it's three or four years old, then you've got to kind of start the process of trying to get help and trying to get all these accommodations in place for you. Um, and your child or whatever, and it's so difficult. Imagine having that ability to know from birth that, hey, my kid is on the autism spectrum, so now I need to go and find help, you know, instantly. It's like the first thing you, you, you understand, like you go, okay, well, now I'm gonna go see my doctor, see my physician, um, you know, see my pediatrician, ask them for what help's available when my kid starts to develop talking language and stuff, because children on the autism spectrum will have certain delays in like speech and stuff like that and language, um, depending on what level of support needs they, they will need. It depends on their ability, really. And this obviously is something that you judge over time. It's something that you, 
will eventually have some sort of process in place for. But in terms of this test, what do I think about it? I think it's super interesting. I think it could help a lot of people access help earlier, but that's pretty much it. I mean, there's no other upside to it other than knowing earlier if your child's on the autism spectrum or not. And I guess it's not gonna be a mandatory thing. I guess people probably don't wanna even know, you know? Some people like have the option to know if their kid is gonna be bored with any, they, people have the option to know if their child is gonna be born with any physical disabilities. And a lot of people just opt out of that because they just think, well, it's my kid, I'm gonna love them, whatever. I don't really care if they have any physical disabilities, you know, or otherwise. So I guess it kind of like, it is helpful for some people and it's gonna be very helpful, but um, I just thought it was fascinating research that I could present to you guys to talk about and have a discussion. And I'd love to have the discussion. Drop me a comment right now. Let me know what your thoughts are on it. If this is groundbreaking, if you think it's dangerous, I don't know. I'd love to know your thoughts. I read every comment, so that actually helps. Guys, if you think this video is interesting, please share it on your Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts because that would be really awesome. Also, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.